All right, this is gonna be my second take at making this video. And the reason being is because I wanna keep it simple and sweet for you guys. And that's gonna be kind of the theme of this video. So today I'm gonna to be going over how I make my Anki cards. And this is a topic that I avoided making for a long time because I feel like everybody has to develop their own system and over time figure out how they like things. So me telling you how I do things shouldn't impact how you decide to eventually use Anki. Um, but this video was requested by one of our lovely viewers, JZDI, who says, please, we want videos on Anki, specifically how to make relevant cards, how to do Anki and prepare for an exam, what changes I would make in my settings when the exam date is approaching, and mistakes that I've done in Anki. So for making relevant cards, uh, that's really a person-by-person -person thing. And I think that's really the beauty of making your own cards is that just the process of you deciding what you think is relevant is already compartmentalizing the information and helping your brain figure out what's going to be important as your exam comes up. In terms of preparing for an exam, I don't make any changes in the settings when the exam date is approaching. I have just trusted in the algorithm and so far it has worked very well for me. And I particularly am going for very long-term retention, not so much short-term retention. I know some people use Anki for short-term preparation for exams, uh, which I think is fine, but I don't think that's really the strength of Anki. So personally, I don't make any changes as an exam is coming up. And then finally, mistakes that I've done in Anki. Really, the two big ones are making poor quality cards that have been difficult for me and caused me to get them wrong a lot. And the second thing is not knowing about Ease Hell, which I discussed in the previous video. And now that I know about it, uh, it has helped me a lot more with uh, not getting cards that are stuck with these tiny intervals and that I'm seeing all the time. So going back to how I make my cards, well, now that I'm working in the hospital, there's basically two ways that I go about it. Whenever I learn something new, uh, like a small tidbit that I think would be useful to make into an Anki card, I'll either quickly take out my phone and jot it down into OneNote, or I'll take out a piece of scratch paper and write it down. And while I'm writing it down, I'm also trying to consider how I'm going to turn it into an Anki card. And the big part about turning it into an Anki card is that I want to make it simple and into individual pieces of information as much as possible. Uh, if you go back to the 20 rules of formulating knowledge, you'll remember that when you're making cards, you don't want to make answers that are these huge paragraphs where you may recall only part of the answer. You really want to just have discrete, simple pieces of information that are on each card. Now I'm just going to show a quick example of some of the notes I took while in the hospital, and then I will show you how I convert some of them into cards. So here's an example of some notes that I took while in the hospital a couple weeks ago. And every piece of information here is basically something that I thought uh, might be something good to make an Anki card out of. So that's kind of what I just do in the hospital. I always write down little tidbits of information and I try and think of how I can phrase them uh, to eventually turn them into an Anki card. So for the first card, I might do something like, when should you start to consider adding hydrocortisone? in a patient with shock? And the answer would be after the third presser. And then if you take a look at that, you'll take a look, it's just kind of like a question answer format. There's a close here. And then if you have any extra information, you can add that on the bottom. One other way that I like to do it is to do like an equal sign, like reason paralytics may become harmful in intubated patients equals muscle loss slash myopathy. Here's an example of some of the notes I took in OneNote, and these are some of the cards that I have not converted over yet. How long is a MRSA swab good for? And I could say seven days. Um, I could also ask at what percent FiO2 does oxygen toxicity begin? And that would be 60%. Why is dopamine not favored in septic shock, significantly higher rate of arrhythmias, um, and then no difference in mortality compared to other vasopressors. And then if you take a look at this card, you'll see it's just a question and answer. And then once you flip over the card, it will have the extra information in there as well. 
So anyways, that's just a quick look into how I make my cards. It's the same process for UWorld. Again, just try and find singular pieces of information that you want to turn into a card and just do it like that. Don't try and cram a bunch of information into a card. Also, I do want to note, um, I am almost approaching my longest streak, which is pretty awesome, 121 days, so I'm pretty proud of that. And also, I only get about 50, 60 cards a day now, um, despite my deck being actually 15,000 cards. So that really shows you the power of using Anki long term. I have many cards that have five-year intervals at this point, and I'm still able to recall them. So I really, really enjoyed using Anki, and I highly recommend it to everybody. If you're doubting the the strength of Anki, uh, I would say just keep keep checking forward, and hopefully it will pay off for you in the end. Um, here's just some more examples of some questions that I made, uh, just so you can show I kind of follow the same format. But again, Everything comes down to your own personal preference. Don't just blindly copy what other people do. Don't just use pre-made decks because uh, everybody else is using pre-made decks. I mean, that sometimes works for people. But for me, I found that making my own cards was the best solution for me. Um, and anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. And see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.